The internet is beside its collective self about Mark Stoops. And why are they beside themselves about Mark Stoops? Well, Mark Stoops had a coach's show, The Audacity, and someone called in and he was talking about the Georgia game and it wasn't the best of showings for Kentucky. And so Mark Stoops made a comment made a comment about NIL, and you don't need to take my word for it. I'm going to do what I would encourage all of you to do, including many of you who have talked about this already and haven't done this, and that is to have Director Colin cue up the actual sound and then don't listen to anyone else. Judge for yourself. You know, the, the other side, if you want to do that, it's blame, complain, deny, or make excuses, and we're not going to do that. You know, it is what it is, and... Uh, you know, fans have that right. I, I give it to them. It, you know, I just encourage them to donate more because that's what those teams are doing. And in, in, uh, in, uh, yeah, I could promise you in Georgia, they, they bought some pretty good players. You're allowed to these days. And uh, we could use some help. That's what they look like. You know what I mean? When you have 85 of them. So, so uh, uh, I encourage uh, anybody that's disgruntled to, to pony up some more. Okay, and if you're listening on podcast, Mark Stoops had the posture of a fourth grade bus driver as he made these comments. He didn't exactly lean into it. It did not exactly sound to me or seem to me like it was premeditated. It is in my best interest to make a big deal out of this. I just can't bring myself to do it. And I know a lot of people did today, and that's okay. Um, I, I don't care about that. I couldn't care less about it. And you may ask yourself, well, if you don't care, why are you leading the show with it? Well, I got a couple of things I do want to tell you that branch off of this, but really I just got asked about it a lot today. And I got asked, I, give, I, I do not blame you guys. I get why it caught your ears, but I got asked by a lot of people who I believe thought I was going to go in on Mark Stoops. And there are plenty of folks doing that. So if you're looking for that flavor of content tonight, it's out there to be found. It's just a non-issue to me. I'll tell you what it was. It was a classic issue or classic case of seeing opinions of a thing before you actually saw the thing. This happens a lot. You probably find yourself in this little, this little social media funnel sometimes of seeing a lot of people say something about someone or something or some quote before you've seen the quote. Well, before you know it, you've already got a pretty well-formed opinion on something and you don't even know the context because you haven't even heard it or seen it yet. It happens to me. I have to guard against it. So it started to happen to me last night with this. I saw like four or five people I know, like four or five people whose opinions I trust and value, start talking about Mark Stoops and how dare he, how disingenuous is this? Well, why doesn't he pony up the dough before asking fans who barely make ends meet to pony up the dough? And so, hey, I got a little worked up about it because what I thought was Mark Stoops had like called an impromptu press conference and had put eye black on and leaned in and grabbed the mic for himself or maybe had it descend down from the ceiling like a, a boxing match. And he just looked big blue nation in the eye and said, how dare you peasants question me after I lose to Georgia? You want to win? Give me more money. And then I saw it. And it was that. And it was a very, very laid back kind of informal setting or as formal as the the Mark Stoops show on Monday night can be. That's what that was from, by the way. Um, real reason I did choose to lead the show with this after telling you I don't really care about the clip itself. I, I, here, I'll get to it in a second. What I wanted to talk to you about is when it does come to NIL and it does come to what it really takes, there is a storm brewing in the NIL world and people who run collectives know it, coaches know it, folks who are running that portion of an athletic department know it, and it looks a little something like this. It takes money in modern college athletics. Well, it takes money in modern college football to build a winning roster. It just does, and if you don't like that, it's probably time for you to hit the off-ramp. You don't have to love it, but you have to, you have to at least digest it and be able to embrace it. So what's about to happen is when you get a few years into the NIL game, when you have to ask your donors for more money, it's okay to ask them for more money. That's not the problem. Asking for it's not the hard part. Even getting the money initially is not the hard part. The hard part is getting that group of folks to understand just because you're giving us more doesn't mean you get more. I was talking to someone in the past week and a half that is in charge of a major collective operation in college football, and they said this exact thing. It was not, 
we have trouble getting the money on the front end because NIL is still pretty new. So it's not that they're having trouble. Everyone wants to be part of the effort. Everyone wants to turn their $75,000 a year donation into 92 and change. We're, we're willing to do that. We'll play ball with you. But you better not keep going eight and four. You better not just keep going nine and three. If I'm paid state and I'm leading my collective, Bradley runs our collective just for the record. And Bradley's going out and he's He's pounding the pavement, and he's knocking on doors, and all of a sudden, the guy who used to just write 800K per year puts 1.1 mil on that check, and I still just put up nine wins per year. He doesn't view that as a return on his increased investment. That's the mind game. That's the trick that folks aren't realizing. You're not doing this in a bubble. You're not just upping your donation to my collective. Everyone around the conference is doing it. We're not asking you to give more so we can pull away. We're asking you to give more so we can keep up. But that's easy to understand in a logic-based world when it's not your money. When it's your money, and more of it, coming out of your wallet, you want more in return. Now, there's some folks out there who are going to contribute to an NIL and their team is going to scale its results and it all's well that ends well there. That will be the exception. That won't be the rule. There are a lot of places out there where they're going to spend millions of dollars on NIL just to break even. They're going to spend millions on NIL just to, just to maintain the current footing that they have. And for one or two or three years, it'll work. It won't work for four or five or six years. That's the immediate concern. Now, Here's the response that hmm, even I would have if I were you. Oh, well, it'll eventually work itself out. And if some NIL funds dry up, they dry up. But it's all basically a market mechanism. And you are right about that. When those market mechanisms start swallowing your program, are you going to be as free and easy about that is all I'm asking. Uh, also, just to go back to the Stoops thing, because I got a loaded show. I don't have much more time to spend on this other than the 10 minutes and change we've already spent. His whole point was tongue-in-cheek. Mark Stoops' whole point there was tongue-in-cheek. Yes, he did say, if you want more results, give me more money. But that's like living in the 70s or the 80s and saying, man, I want to look like Arnold. I, I, look at Schwarzenegger over here. I want to look like that. And then your dad says, okay, you want to look like Arnold? You can just train four hours a day and pound 6,000 calories, none of it being the stuff you like to eat, and do that for five or six years, and maybe you'll start to look like Arnold. He's not literally expecting you to do that. He's almost saying it mockingly, knowing you're not going to do that. Mark Stoops does not expect to ever rival Georgia at Kentucky. Now, he's not going to come out and say that. But Mark Stoops has got one of the best jobs in America because historically, up until about five minutes ago, Folks understood he's going to get paid at a top 10 level, but it's also Kentucky. So let's calibrate our expectation level accordingly. And I'm not, I'm not mocking most of Kentucky nation because I, I think most of those folks get it. There may be, you know, fringes, but every fan base has fringes. But what he was saying to the fringe is, hey, you guys want to knock me for losing to Georgia? Give like Georgia gives. We'll build like Georgia builds. Well, no, you won't. You never will. You're Kentucky football. Uh, Georgia's basketball coach any given decade could say the same thing if they're complaining that Georgia doesn't perennially beat Kentucky on the hardwood. That's the way it works. It's the way it always works. And NIL is really not going to change much because everyone's doing NIL. So Kentucky's not going to get an edge relative to the rest of the big boys by NIL. Mark Stoops knows that. Mark Stoops is as comfortable in his skin as any head coach in this conference, and that includes the smarts and the sabins of the world. He's fine. It's fine. We're all fine. Much to do about nothing or much to do about nothing.